Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to take a look at the updated version of the SC Designs F-16. Uh, it is version 1.1.0 and they said they did a complete cockpit rebuild for the F-16C and F-16D, correcting geometry, improving textures and enhancing detailing throughout, many instruments corrected for appearance and functionality, uh, and the ejection seat models and textures improved. So, well, that's the ejection seat down there. I'm using track IR, of course. And one reason for that is because I also checked out how the plane is in DCS world. And so let me let you take a look at that first. And I, I want to make clear, I'm not saying that uh, this far cheaper version in uh, Flight Sim, frankly speaking, needs to leave up, live up to the DCS world standards, but the DCS world version has a lot of other functionality for the weapons and stuff like that whereas this one at least the internals should look right right so if we look down there look off to the side so i'm gonna let you see the plane in dcs world first and then i'll continue with this flight all right so here's the f-16 in dcs world and i better just go full throttle since we're already off to a start and uh, the nose wheel steering is squirrely. I do have track IR on, but let's get off the ground before I try to talk about this situation. Uh, it's been a long time since I flew this. And that's how I look right now. Gosh, I'm sort of heavily loaded, aren't I? Okay, back inside though. So we see the multifunction displays. And of course the functionality in here will be quite different from in in Flight Sim, but I expect that, that's fine. Uh, throttle is sort of twitchy. Interesting fabric on the seat. Looks comfy, I guess, though very worn out. And again, the specific functions of the side panel controls will probably be different in Flight Sim since we don't have the weaponry and all. But I'm just looking to gauge the look of everything. So, you know, I can tilt my head like this. Okay. Well, let's see about performance, shall we? So, I'm gonna punch it. Speed is pretty constant going up. And you see the climb here. Let me climb faster. It doesn't slow down a whole heck of a lot as we climb. As you would expect. I mean, I'm on full afterburner right now. Nice change in the sound as we climb up here. And start to force the engine into struggling a bit. Well, Mach 0 0.93, 0 0.94, and we'll see how it goes. 0 0.96, 0 0.97, 0 0.98, 0 0.99. I'm still going up right now. Mach 1. We don't experience a whole lot of transonic drag here. I don't know if that's particularly correct or not. Of course, a fighter like the F-16 will be optimized for it, but whether it be that optimized, especially with all the weapons that we have, I'm not sure. And we've got the silence up front for the sound barrier. We don't have the crack of the sonic boom right there, but at least some understanding of how the whole going past the speed of sound works. Now I do want to go fast and having all this stuff doesn't really help with that. Well, we just in the external tanks. I guess that helps a bit. Well, we're at 48,000 now. But yeah, with this load, under the arm you can see the 1.31 on the HUD for the actual Mach number. 
And yeah, we're not going to get very fast like this, I'll tell you. Also, that's the map Mach number down there, 1.31. It might be... I feel like it's underperforming, but maybe it's just me. Well, let's let's dive and skim around and see. Well, that's how the train looks here. Oh yeah, 8 G's... 8.4 now. But yeah, up close the train doesn't look especially great. Clouds look nice though. So without afterburner going 0.94 times the speed of sound, uh, the fuel flow down here, which is 4,700 feet above sea level, is 12,500 pounds per hour. So just sort of making a mental note of that. So that's how the DCS world version looks. Um, different in many respects, though, you know, some of the basic instruments do have the same layout and as I said there we don't expect everything to be the same here since stuff just won't have the same functionality right because we don't have the weapons like the displays aren't the same but overall if we look to the side here you know look down we get the same general vibe I do still have this G limit problem on the HUD though I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why I always have this G limit problem but uh, that, that shouldn't stop us from doing stuff. So I'm also here at uh, Nevada, in Nevada, and we're going to try it out and see how it goes. So full afterburner and everything. And taking off from Mesquite. With the conformal fuel tanks and uh, external fuel tanks, and probably heavier here than in the DCS world version, even though I had external fuel tanks as well as the weapons. But this took off in, in a hurry and is very nimble right now. I might say it's a bit livelier than that version. One thing, ah, there's the fuel flow indicator. Uh, not as easy to spot, actually. Now, in the DCS world version at this throttle setting, well, I mean, we need to accelerate a little bit, but it was at 12,500 pounds per hour. Uh, pounds per hour? Yeah, per hour. Um, but that was at Mach 9, uh, 0.96 or 0.95. Now it's a little bit complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on there. There seems to be some overlapping stuff. Like there's two Mach numbers that actually don't agree with each other. Uh, maybe it has to do with my custom texture. I'll try and load a different version soon. It's not accelerating that much down here right now. Let me try and give it the afterburner. Afterburner really guzzles gas. 37,000 pulling G's I can get to 8.8 .8, but then start having deleterious effects there Well, past Mach 1, let me take it out of afterburner now. It seems to consume less fuel than the DS DCS version 1. Okay, well let's go up and see how fast it goes. In DCS world, I sort of stopped at 30,000 feet because going past that I didn't think it was gonna keep from stalling. And it's getting, it's about the same on that. Airspeed, airspeed, airspeed. The fly-by-wire nature feels pretty much the same. And this is how it looks here.
somehow DCS World just looks grainier. And maybe in that way it's better for cinematics, but this sure looks crisper and more detailed. So pass Mach 1, and here we accelerate much more. And we have sounds up front. And actually, it, uh, like the DCS World version, it has sounds up front and then the sound, but no crack of, of the sound barrier there. So it's actually just like that. Well, I'm already at Mach 1.5, which is faster than I went with the F-16 in DCS World. I don't know if the DCS World F-16 had some sort of limiter, though. The textures definitely don't look as detailed in here. The seat is plain, it's not as fluffy. Um, the view back there, not bad. Of course, it'd look better with all the weapons, and you can put them on if you get the, the plane from... Uh, just lighter somewhere else rather than the in-game marketplace. If you get from the in-game marketplace you can't add the weapons. Well, Mach 1.7. But yeah, I mean it's looking good overall. Except for the HUD part, but let me try a different version right now. We, we can clearly go much faster than I was able to go in DCS world, but uh, I can't say anything either here or, or there about it. It does seem to have a speed limit there at this height, uh, at 550 knots indicated, so if we wanted to go faster we'd have to go higher, but Mach 1.8 is pretty respectable. Let's, uh, let's go back to the main menu and I'll get a different variant just to make sure that maybe it's my own texture that's causing the problem with the HUD or something like that, I don't know. Okay, so the D, I'll just go with this one, I guess. Should be interesting. And uh, why don't we just have less fuel? Let's go with, like, internal fuel. Maybe, maybe some sidewinders on the tips. It has been a while since the previous update of this plane. Uh, before this update, the previous update was January 20th, 2023 so more than a year and a half so I'm glad to see work being done on it and apparently a lot of work and they note conformal fuel tanks returned and given multiplayer compliant visibility coding so we see we saw the we saw the conformal tanks there this time the HUD on the left side seems fine, but on the right side it seems messy. It's got two different radar altimeters on that side. So... I don't know what's going on with the HUD, basically. Well, we're lighter this time. We... okay. Yeah. Uh, nope, it's got the uh, two different uh, speed indicators on. Yeah, the, the hunt for me is just messed up. It's got double things. I don't know. If, that might just be a me problem. I don't know. Oh, there's the D version with the dual cockpit. Yeah, no real differences between this and the other one, I think. You can look around. Track IR works a little bit differently with flight sim than it does with DCS World. I'll have to retune it here. But more or less the same idea there. You can see how it is. So, I'm not gonna belabor this. You get the picture. They have updated it. It's still a fun plane to fly and Maybe maybe slightly more fun here in Flight Sim than in DCS World, but uh, obviously not with the weapons functionality and all the other stuff in DCS World, the complexity and all that detail. But uh, if you want to relax in an F-16, this is probably the way to go. So anyway, with that, I'll just fly around a bit. I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.